Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Live journalist just accused Sarah Sanders of not making a real pecan pie on Thanksgiving. The liberal journalists who constantly harass and try to disrespect President Donald Trump and White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders are clearly running out of things to complain about. They have descended to the level of the truly stupid. This is evidenced by the fact that American Urban Radio Network's reporter just accused Sarah Sanders of not actually baking the pecan pie that she posted a photo of on her Twitter account. Sanders wrote in a caption under a photo of her pie, I don't cook much these days, but managed this chocolate pecan pie for Thanksgiving at the family farm. In what we can only hope is a tongue-in-cheek holiday joke, Liberal Ryan responded, show it to us on a table. Obnoxious April later added, I am not trying to be funny but folks are already saying hashtag get and hashtag fake be show it to us on the table with folks eating it and a pic of you cooking it. I am getting the biggest laugh out of this. I am thankful for this laugh on Black Friday. She went on, OMG. Wow that's. Flatline. April then tweeted a photo of the infamous poop filled pie from the movie The Help and wrote, I doubt if at press sec saw the movie The Help and knows anything about that by it octave I asked Spencer carried. April still wasn't done, and then wrote, See I know your husband cooks up a storm and I have eaten his food. Beautiful pic of your real pie. And I do not want to leave the impression I was to taste at press sec by. Nope. Not at all. I hope they enjoyed the stock photo by. After insulting all Roy Moore supporters watched them strategist dodge question about Bill Clinton five times in a row. Fox's Guy Benson interviewed Democratic strategist Zach Pekonis on Roy Moore. Pekonis has made it clear he does not like Moore, even calling him a pedophile, who wants to rape eighth graders. However, Benson asked if he would truly vote for a Republican over someone like Bill Clinton. Pekonis then dodged this question five times in a row. If Bill Clinton were up for election again, let's say he ran for president and were the nominee in 2020. He was credibly accused of forcible rape. Would, Democrats, vote for him over a Ted Cruz? I think history shows the answer is yes, said Benson. Look, I was 15 years old when Bill Clinton left office. That's the age when Roy Moore goes after most of his girls, said Bacchanas, avoiding the question the first time. Would you vote for Bill Clinton if he ran again? asked Benson. I think that all of these women need to be believed, and that we need to hold everybody accountable, whether it's Al Franken or or whether it's John Conyers, or whether it's Bill Clinton, or whether it's Donald Trump, said Bacchanas, dodging a second time. So you wouldn't vote for Bill Clinton for president against Ted Cruz? asked Benson. Would you vote for Donald Trump? responded Bacchanas third time. I didn't. Your question. Back to you, said Benson. Yeah, I was 15 years old, dodged Pecon is a fourth time. That's a dodge, said Benson. I mean, look, I think that. All women need to be believed, and, said Pecon is. Like Juanita Broderick, said Benson. I think women need to be believed, said Pecon is, dodging for a fifth time. MSNBC is furious at President Trump for thanking our troops on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving, President Trump took the time to video chat with our troops and thank them for their service. However, according to MSNBC his gesture was not good enough. 1. It's nice for the president to do that. Maybe I'm reading too far into this, but it didn't seem very authentic. It seemed to be heavily scripted. I'm used to a president looking into the camera and thanking the men and women. Talking about them and what they're doing about not about, to use his words, a beautiful tax cut, said MSNBC analyst Robert Jainham. 
Nobody wages cultural wars as effectively as Donald Trump, said another MSNBC guest Brendan Greenlee. It was amazing to watch him in his message to the troops doing it right then and there, talking about, the reason we're different is this administration is letting you do your job, they're letting you fight. These are all cultural signals. The speech is kind of pockmarked by these political points and these partisan points. The idea that you're fighting for something real when the real thing appears to be a booming stock market? I mean, I'm perplexed, said another guest Neil Stanage. No matter what President Trump does they will find some way to insult and belittle him for it. Are you sick of all their hatred and lies? Be thankful. See rapper tell Love Arbol what we have all been thinking. Rapper named Master P said what we were all thinking about Love Arbol refusing to thank President Trump for saving his son's life. In multiple interviews Ball refused to acknowledge Trump. However, he was willing to thank the Chinese president who was planning on locking up his son for 10 years for shoplifting. I just think it's a blessing to have your kids back at home, man. You gotta just be humble said Master P in an interview with TMZ. Man, just be thankful that your kids are safe, they are not in prison, and do the right thing. Trump, had something to do with your kid getting home, so, right is right and wrong is wrong, he said. He was then asked if he thinks Ball should thank the president for his effort. If that man, which had a big thing of getting his son home, that's what it should be. Give respect where it's at, he said. President Trump has had a lot to say about Lavar Ball himself. It wasn't the White House, it wasn't the State Department, it wasn't Father Lavar's so-called people on the ground in China that got his son out of a long-term prison sentence, it was me. Too bad. Lavar is just a poor man's version of Don King, but without the hair. Just think, tweeted President Trump. Lavar, you could have spent the next five to ten years during Thanksgiving with your son in China but no NBA contract to support you. But remember Lavar, shoplifting is not a little thing. It's a really big deal, especially in China. Ungrateful fool, tweeted Trump. Give it a rest. Geraldo shocks audience with Epic Rand agreeing with Trump on NFL. President Trump attacked NFL player Olivier Vernon for taking a knee during the national anthem on Thanksgiving. Can you believe that the disrespect for our country, our flag, our anthem continues without penalty to the players? The commissioner has lost control of the hemorrhaging league. Players are the boss. Tweeted President Trump. While many liberals are freaking out over Trump's tweets, Fox's Geraldo Rivera shocked audiences by agreeing with our president. The president senses he's on the right side of history and he's with a majority of Americans, said Rivera. You know, you can't say that about many, or too many other issues. But on this one, I think, people just get the sense, you know, give it a rest. The world is not perfect. We've got plenty of issues. Let's put all of these divisions aside. Just enjoy your family. Enjoy the meal. Enjoy freedom, said Rivera. That's why when I saw that one player, the giant defensive player there, kneeling. I said now, what the heck, I mean, come on day can't you even on this day, on this day, can't we all be united? He said. When you look at the bad news, the one guy protesting, the good news is that he was the only one protesting, as far as we know, he said. If we want to heal our country, we all need to come together as one every once in a while especially on holidays like Thanksgiving. Will liberals do everything possible to keep us divided? On Thanksgiving see the disgusting way Colin Kaepernick protested Thanksgiving. Colin Kaepernick once again trashed all over American traditions with a protest of Thanksgiving. He spent his Thanksgiving protesting in Alcatraz. Today, 
I was on Alcatraz Island at the Indigenous People's Sunrise Gathering, in solidarity with those celebrating their culture and paying respects to those that participated in the 19-month occupation of Alcatraz in an effort to force to honor the Treaty of Fort Laramie, tweeted Kaepernick. Our fight is the same fight. We're all fighting for our justice, for our freedom, Kaepernick said to the other demonstrators choosing to skip Thanksgiving. If there's one thing that I take away from today and seeing the beauty of everybody out here, it's that we're only getting stronger every day, we're only getting larger and larger every day. I see the strength in everybody. The dancing, the rituals, that is our resistance. We continue to fight. We continue to fight for justice. We fight for our freedom, and we continue on that path, said Kaepernick. This is similar to when he left on a voyage to Africa for the 4th of July. How can we truly celebrate independence on a day that intentionally robbed our ancestors of theirs? To find my independence I went home, he tweeted on the 4th of July. I am not African because I was born in Africa but because Africa was born in me, he said. Did you miss the days where people had respect for their country?